Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be part 4 of the Flask API with Python. And in the last video we hooked up our code to a SQLite database. And if you didn't watch that, you should probably watch that before you watch this because then it'll make more sense. And we also altered a bit of the API code. Um, now let me just show you real quick. Well, I'm going to be showing you either way, not really real quick, but we combined uh, the get and the post method into one API route, and uh, what we did was the request method. If it equals get, we did this code right here, and if it was post, uh, we did this. Then we posted it to the database, and we also read it from the database, depending on what kind of call it was. And then I made mention of how string interpolation can kind of lead us into a bit of a, a problem, because if people are smart enough, they can do what's called SQL injection. And if you don't know what SQL injection is, it's basically typing SQL statements into API calls, or maybe it's some form data that's going to a backend or whatever the, the case may be. And so just think of instead of console, they, they enter some kind of SQL statement that then they can get more data than what we as programmers were willing to give them. And let me show you what I mean by that. Um, so let's say, for example, instead of console here, let's delete that. Uh, what it, let's say the user puts PS4 right just like they normally would and then they put a single quote um, and then they put something like or one is equal to one dash dash let me explain to you what this is uh, doing so they put the single quote here to end the they knew it was in, in single quotes to begin with because it was a string and then they put or one equals one uh, one equals one will always be true. So no matter what, no matter what row it's going through, it's going to return that because one does equal one all the time. Uh, therefore, it will return every single row. And then the dash dash is just a comment in SQL, and it comments out the last, uh, you know, single quote right there. Hopefully that made any bit of sense. But if not, let me go ahead and just do a little bit. Uh, let me put back this back to console, okay, and let me run it so that it's going here. We'll bring up Postman, and right here we have console equals PS4. You can see we got just the PS4, right? But what if we do what I just did? Um, and instead of spaces, we have to use pluses just to make them into a query string, or it won't work. So PS4, single quote, plus or plus one equals one uh, plus a dash dash. I think this right here, whoops, this right here will work. And let's see if we run that. Yeah, we now get the Xbox entries as well. So pretty much I have the data right here actually pulled up um, in our SQLite database. Pretty much it brings back the whole table. And that's not something we want, right? <laughs> we want them to get only what it's pertaining to. Okay. Um, so yeah, that can that can be a problem. Um, and I I think what we need to do, or I know rather, what we need to do is use something called parameters. Um, and parameters are basically you put a placeholder into your SQL statement, and then the parameters are different values that will go into that placeholder so it doesn't execute it as SQL. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the F to stop the string interpolation and instead we're just going to use a question mark as the placeholder. So let's go ahead and do that. I thought I hit backspace. Just like that. And then what you do is in the execute you have another parameter, which is a tuple of all of the different values that are going into um, where the placeholders are. In our case, it's only going to be one value, uh, but if you had like where console equals this, or or maybe not or and name is equal to this, um, then you would have a tuple of two items. 
and, and whatnot. So in our case, it's just going to be one. Um, but regardless, it needs to be in tuple form uh, or it will not recognize it. So what we need to do is put console and then just a single comma to denote to that this is a tuple, but it's just one value. If we had multiple, it would be like something like this and then comma something, you know, so on and so forth. So we just want that. And now let me save and you can see it restarted. Let's see if it still gives us back everything. You can see it gave us nothing because this makes no sense now, right? It's putting this, this literal right here, PS4, this plus or plus one equals one plus dash dash. It's not making it a part of the statement anymore. It's just placing it into, well, where that placeholder is. So now we have a nice little way to, whoops, avoid um, any kind of SQL injection. And you can see it, it works normally uh, if we were just to put the regular PS4. You can see PS4, PS4, PS4. Okay, so what if we want to do that for this part as well? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's put a question mark here and another question mark here. And the two values that are going in are from the variables console and name. In that order, right? Yeah, console name. Okay. And now we don't need actually DF anymore. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything to put it there, but we just don't have any any string uh, interpolation right now. So it doesn't make sense to do so. So now if we switch this to post and we put console equals PS4. And actually, let's do a different system. Switch um, and name is equal to Animal Crossing. And that looks good on my end. So we'll hit send. We get this all good. And now if we do the get and console equals switch, you can see we get the last entry, which was uh, ID of six. It was for the switch and the name of it is Animal Crossing. So that's a cool little way to avoid SQL injection like I just showed you in the beginning. Um, and yeah, I, I, I mean, it's a, uh, it's pretty pretty basic, but then again, it's it's pretty powerful just to do something simple like that. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this little tidbit, this little extra video part four. I'm trying to think what we're gonna do for part five. Um, you know, I'll keep thinking of things to talk about, and we'll just go from there. But anyway, guys, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and take care.